Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week's tutorial comes courtesy of Catherine who emailed me a couple of weeks ago and asked how to create feathers in Illustrator. So I kind of thought about this two ways. I thought we could create a more organic looking feather over here and we could also create a more geometric iconic looking feather over here that you could use as an icon or for different more geometric looking applications. So these are the colors that we're going to be using in this tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to create everything you see on screen. So this is the exact outcome of this video. So these are the colors I'm using and as always here are those color builds so you can use the same colors that I'm using. I'm going to be working in CMYK and Illustrator by default will create a document in CMYK. If you want to create these feathers to be used online, uh, maybe for social media, just make sure that you're working in RGB mode and you're using these color builds. So before you even get started, once you create your document, come over here and go file document color mode and just change this to RGB and you'll be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna hop right in. This is more of a quick tip tutorial this week since these are really simple to execute and I just wanted to share how to quickly do these. Okay, so we're gonna start with this uh, more organic looking feather and we're gonna work our way over. So the first thing we need to do with the organic feather is we need to create the feather base and we'll just move on from there. So I create the base by coming over here and grabbing your ellipse tool. Let me grab a color first so you can see this. Grab your ellipse tool and just freehand an ellipse and then hit A on your keyboard to grab your direct select tool, click the top anchor point, and drag those handles right into that anchor point. Do the same exact thing with the bottom. And we're actually gonna be using this exact same shape for the more iconic looking feathers. So I'm just gonna make a copy and drag it over here so we don't have to do this again later. So I'm just gonna click, hold Alt, click and drag, and hold Shift while I'm dragging, that'll keep it straight. Okay, so we're gonna grab our pencil tool now, and I'm just gonna be using my mouse for this, so do not feel like you need a Wacom tablet to do this. Um, hit N on your keyboard and that'll activate your pencil tool. And with your mouse or with your Wacom tablet, all you're gonna do is start with a path and you have to finish with a path in order for this to work right. So I'm gonna zoom in really close so you can see. So I'm gonna click on the path, drag down on the path a little bit, and then draw your detail in. And when you come back up, just make sure you hit that path again and drag a little bit. I'll do it one more time over here. And come on up. Actually, this one I drew kind of bad. Let me do this. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we kind of have these organic forms working into our feather, but it's still feeling a little too geometric, so we're gonna adjust the top and then the bottom slightly. So I'm just gonna come up here and Grab my pencil tool once more, hit N on your keyboard, and then just freehand a tip that's a little more organic in nature, and the same thing with the bottom. Okay, so what I usually do is I come in and I just fix any type of points that look a little funky to me. We still want this to look hand-drawn, so don't get paranoid about making your lines perfectly straight um, because that would kind of defeat the purpose of the organic form. So I'm just gonna hit A on my keyboard and that activates my direct select tool and I can see right here if I zoom in you can see um, I've got this weirdness going on so I just want to fix this really quick and I'm gonna delete this anchor point because I think it's kind of causing me a few issues so I'm gonna hit the hyphen key on my keyboard that activates my delete anchor point tool I'm just gonna click that and then I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard once again to grab my direct select tool so now I can adjust these handles slightly there we go so that's a little cleaner okay so this actually looks a little weird too, where it's connecting. I just want this to be a little bit smoother of a transition, so I'm just gonna delete this anchor point and maybe this one. All right, so now we're gonna add a stem inside of here and then we'll add some texture and then we'll be done with this one. So actually, let's make this a little skinnier too. It's feeling pretty wide compared to the example. So that looks better. All right, so we're just gonna draw a stem in here using the pen tool. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard, click anywhere in the middle, and then drag a curved line down. If you don't like where your um, anchor point hit down here, you can hold space bar and you can move it around, which is really helpful. And then hold Alt when you're happy and drag this handle in to that anchor point and then close off the path up here. And this is where you can hit A on your keyboard and address this handle afterwards. I want this to be Definitely skinnier than the way I had it. Let me color this something different too so you can see what the stem looks like. All right, 
so that's looking pretty good. Let me adjust this handle just a little bit more, make it a little skinnier toward the bottom. All right, so the next thing we need to do is kind of give it an outline around, which you can see up here, if I drag it over here. Um, so the way that I do this is I just add a stroke onto the stem. So I come over here, let me just add um, a color you can see. I've got this lime green, and this is the part where you need to kind of commit to the weight that you want this to be, because once we do this next step, um, you can't go back. So I was like making a copy of it. I'm holding Alt and dragging, and um, I'm going to reduce this slightly. So let's go down to like 0.5 points, and that's better, because I just want the brown to extend further up. Over here, you can see the brown stem kind of ended right here, and I want it to go further up. Okay, so the other thing that I always like to do is you can see on the stroke how it kind of ends abruptly. I like a smoother transition right here, so I just apply a rounded cap and a rounded corner to that stroke and that makes it a little smoother. Okay, so now we're just going to expand this stroke. So just come over here, object, expand, hit OK. And now we're gonna grab everything together and we're gonna come over here to our Pathfinder palette. If you don't see it, you can get to it by going Window, Pathfinder, and it'll show up. And I'm just gonna hit this divide icon, and whenever you use the Pathfinder palette, it automatically groups all of your elements together, so we need to ungroup them now. So hit Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G on a PC, and that'll ungroup. And now I can come in here and click on the green and delete it. And usually when you're um, working with a stroke, you have to do it, you kinda of get two areas right here. So I'm just grabbing the green, and deleting, and deleting. Okay, so now we've got a feather with a stem, and if we wanna apply some texture inside of that feather, we can go File, Place, select the texture that you want. I'm using a soft watercolor texture from my watercolor texture kit number two, and I'll leave a link to that if you're interested. This texture from that kit is soft number 13, and all you wanna do is place the texture behind whatever object you wanna place it inside of. So in this case, I want this texture to go inside of this feather, so I need this texture to start out behind the feather. So I'm gonna place it behind the feather, and if it's not behind the feather, if it's showing up in front of it, you can just right click on it, arrange, send it back, and that'll do the trick. So once you have um, your texture behind the feather, you're just gonna rubber band select both the texture and the feather, right click, make clipping mask, and just like that, you get the texture inside the feather. So that is the organic version of this feather. So now we're gonna move on to the more iconic looking feather. So we're gonna start like this, and. Uh, like we did in the other exercise, I'm just gonna make this a little skinnier. All right, so we need to add a stroke to this since this does not have a fill. We're gonna start out with this one and I'm just going to come over here. I'm gonna switch this. I can just click that arrow and it'll switch it. And I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, hold shift and select this brown. And I need it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna come into my stroke palette and just up at one point. And once again, I'm gonna apply that rounded cap and rounded corner because I really like that. The next thing we're going to do is draw a line right down the center, and this will also act as our stem right here. So I'm going to hit the backslash key on my keyboard, click on the top, and as I'm dragging, hold shift, and that'll keep it straight. And now we're just going to add this kind of top detail up here. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard, and this is my pen tool. I'm just going to click anywhere over here, and I'm going to make sure I hit right in that center line, and then click anywhere over here, and then connect them. And now I'm going to hold shift and select the rest of the feather. I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder once again and hit Divide. Now I need to ungroup once again, so Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G on a PC. Click the excess that I don't need. And now I can select this middle line and kind of drag it down so it disappears. Okay, so now all we have to do is add in these couple of details and our outline will be complete. So I'm gonna hit the backslash key once again and I'm just gonna draw a couple of details over here. And I'm just freehanding this part. I'm gonna draw a line down here. Okay, so to make sure that my lines, um, they're not extending too far right here, looks like it might be a little bit, I can check to be super precise by going into outline mode and you can do that by hitting Command Y or Control Y on a PC. And now if I zoom in here, I can kind of check on things and it looks like those lines are hitting directly where they need to. So it looks, see this line doesn't hit completely and I wouldn't have known that before. So now I can A on my keyboard, click on that point and just drag it until it hits this line. 
And now we're all set with this. And you just have to hit Command Y or Control Y in a PC to exit outline mode. And we're all good. So now I'm going to make a copy of this because we need a version that doesn't have the stem extending all the way down. So I'm going to hold Alt, click, drag, hold Shift to keep it straight. And now I'm just going to drag up the center stem so we just have our feather. Now I'm going to select all of this feather, Object, Expand, hit OK. And now all these separate components are shapes now, but we need to merge them all together. So in your Pathfinder palette, click this little Unite icon. And now we need to create individual shapes. So hit M on your keyboard, and that will give you your rectangle tool. And just drag out a rectangle that covers the whole feather. And I'm just going to color this a different color so we can see what we're doing. Now we need to send this completely to the back. So you can go arrange, send it back, or you can use this keyboard shortcut, Shift Command Open Bracket, or Shift Control Open Bracket on a PC. Now I'm going to select everything, divide. Now we need to ungroup Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. Select the stuff you don't need on the outside. And then I'm also going to get rid of this brown outline. So now I have all different shapes. So now I can select each shape and color it just like I had in the example. And this one's blue. Okay, so now I'm gonna group all of these together. So Command G or Control G on a PC. I'm gonna make a copy, click Hold Alt on your keyboard, click, and then hold Shift as you're dragging. And now I'm going to group all of this together. So Command G or Control G on a PC. And now I'm going to make a copy of this. Hold Alt, click, drag, and as you're dragging, hold Shift. And now you can see it's really hard to line all of this up. So since we had both of these grouped together, I can just come up here and click this horizontal align center. And now this will align it directly, but now we have to ungroup this because I need to select just this blue shape so we can put in this texture. So I'm going to hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC to ungroup that. Now I'm going to place this texture in, and this is out of the same exact kit. And this texture is number streak 07. And you're just going to drag it once again behind the shape that you want the texture to sit inside of. So remember, um, just make sure you send that to the back before you do this. And with your texture selected, I'm going to hold Shift and click on this shape that I want it. Put inside of, right click, make clipping mask. And now I've got the texture inside my feather. And if I don't like this particular portion of that texture, I can hit A on my keyboard, click on that texture, and you'll see this big bounding box appear, and I can move it around. So I can select the portion of the texture that I want to appear right there. So there's no need to release the clipping mask and then redo it again. You can do it all right here. OK, so that's how to create uh, feathers in Illustrator two different ways. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.